Thank you for your wonderful lecture, Mr. De Montebello. I wanted to come back to what you told us about your students in New York. And you said, well, they have no money, uh, but they do have iPads. And the wonderful thing about the iPads is that it brings you any collection from any museum anywhere in the world very close because just lately I was looking at the collections of the Metropolitan and I was amazed that I could see all these details because they have photographed the objects and you can really zoom up close, much closer than you were ever able to see it in the vitrine in the museum. And also with the iPad you can hop around and any information that you might not have, you can look it up because it is available. So perhaps that's why this younger generation doesn't feel the need for this broad general knowledge that we in our 50s and 60s and maybe our 40s have acquired in our education. It also tied into what the lady in front said about young people not wanting to accumulate stuff, but wanting to accumulate experiences. And this is what you can do with your iPad. And then of course the best part would be to combine it with actually physically being there in front of the work of art and seeing the paint and smelling maybe some dust, but the more physical uh, experience that hits you in the gut, as you mentioned earlier. Let, let it be understood first that the answer is coming from someone who does not own an iPad. <laughs> On the other hand, I don't know what connection you have with Apple, but I have access on my Dell computer to the Prado's website, uh, to um, the Bruegels in the um, uh, Kunsthistorisches Museum, and now to that astonishing uh, website of the Ghent Altarpiece, uh, with something like 20,000 pixels per square centimeter of the Ghent Altarpiece. Uh, you, you raise an extremely interesting question. Let me first, before I, I, I give you the positive side, let me use my French character of being right away a râleur and contre, which is uh, to say that you are experiencing nothing. You are, you are looking at simulacra. Uh, you can only experience an original because the simulacrum, no matter how wonderful it is, does lacks the virtue of authenticity. By which I mean, when you are in the Prado, let's say, and you're standing in front of the Meninas, part of, uh, and, I w and I will grant you that today you can probably recreate uh, with a certain number of pixels and even imitating the matière uh, of the surface, almost pretty much the identical picture in the room next door. The difference will be in your mind, subconsciously, that as you approach the Meninas, the real one, you will have a sense that you have stepped back in history, that you will be in the presence of the very work that was in the bedroom of Philip IV, that he made even of caressed and touched, that this is the work. It was not made out of pixels. I'm not a psychiatrist or psychologist and so forth, but there is something that happens in your mind that absolutely changes you when you are con in the con confronting the original object. The other aspect of it, and, and you bring up something very interesting, um, um, the, I have been fascinated by uh, these um, extraordinary images that many of you have also seen of enormous magnification of details. And a friend of mine who's a critic in Paris, he's alive, therefore I don't remember his name right now, um, uh, is about to do a second edition of a book on the way to Calvary by Bruegel in, um, uh, in um, Vienna. 
uh, full of extraordinary details, and he, he sent me some of those details. And I must say, I, I, I was enormously excited by them. And then it occurred to me that I was seeing something Bruegel may not have expected or wanted me to see, because your eye and mine do not have a zoom lens. They don't. Uh, and so are we, in a sense, cheating? But is cheating necessarily wrong if the reaction I received in looking at the Ghent altarpiece or in looking at the way to Calvary of, Jan, of Peter Bruegel the Elder uh, was such an exciting experience? And then it occurred to me what the truth was, which is that the way to Calvary was painted for the Archduke uh, of Habsburg. And he had it in his apartments. And he had it day after day after day. And every day he spent minutes, doesn't need to be more than that. Most of you don't spend more than 15 seconds in front of a picture, time yourselves in a museum. Uh, and he had a lifetime to look and find all of the details. And I go back to what I said earlier in my lecture, the whole thing is an issue of time. And the problem is in museums, we simply do not ever give it the time. I will never forget um, when I, one of my first visits to the Frick, when I was a student in New York with that sublime painting of St. Francis by Bellini in the wilderness. Uh, and I stood in front of that picture just forever. I was just looking at every detail, looking at the hole, going back and forth. And at one point, from the corner of my eye, I saw the guard began to approach me. And uh, I must have been there maybe 10 minutes, which is an eternity in a museum. And the guard came up to me and said, sir, what are you doing? <laughs> but the issue of the magnified detail and the pleasure we take out of it is a, is a very interesting metaphysical one. And um, um, it's one I continue to think about. I have no answer. But all I can say is that I, I find them absolutely uh, a delight. <laughs>